Hey there, this is Into the Presence, and you're watching Rockerazzi.com. Into the Presence um, is a band that started by a bunch of friends, really. Um, everybody in this group has played for other groups or with a bunch of other artists. And because we're all really close friends and have known each other for many years, started something of our own. Um, and so kind of that's what was, that's how it began. Um, and we're just starting to um, promote a record that we have out and um, going on from there. I'd been playing for years for so many artists, and uh, you know, there was a moment in time where Tim, who plays drums on the record, he called me up one day and says, "Hey, man, I got a studio. Why don't you come out and do your record?" Uh, so initially, it began as as somewhat of a solo record project, and then because of all the time we had put in into it and the collaborations, it became more of a band. Uh, and really, the turning point was just that I I write a lot, and I and I, I mean I write tons of stuff. And it was one of those things where, you know, I love to sing, I love to play, and I just felt like it was something that I really wanted to share. Uh, you know, and I love playing for other artists, but it wasn't my music, it wasn't my expression, it wasn't my voice, and no complaints about that. I've had great times working with different people, but this was honest, and this was 100% me, and because I was able to do it around people that I was friends with and love and trust, um, it just became more of a special thing, so. Into the presence, um, the way I write songs is not really focused on anything uh, like for instance, it's not focused on getting a pop single. It's not focused on trying to be a heavy band or it's not focused on trying to be an indie band. What I am trying to do, and we were talking about this earlier, was try to bring out every element of what is in me from music. I mean, yeah. some people eventually, they, they want to write a hit. Like I've, I've hung out with several musicians and, and some of the writers, they're great writers and that is their focus, like we're writing a hit. Um, it's a different kind of pressure that I have with this. It's a pressure to write something as epic as possible without being too, um, how would you say, with, without being overkill on, on notes and musicality, but something that's, you know, I mean, you, you listen to albums like Night at the Opera and it's a perfect blend of everything, you know, a lot of different styles like rock and classical and opera and this and that, and not necessarily that I want to write that, but that's kind of an example of using a lot of different artistic forms to make a great record where it still impacts people and it still I mean there's so many people I mean I was just in London and I asked this with this waiter when he's serving me food I go uh, what bands do you listen to who what's your favorite bands he goes Queen and, and it, I mean it hits everybody right. so and in, in that aspect is just trying to write something as honest and as great and as artistic as possible without alienating people some people do music because that's who they are, that's and that's true. what they do. And no matter if there's three people in the audience or 10,000 people in the audience, it, it doesn't really matter. You're up there on that stage doing what you love doing, and it's kind of the same in the writing process, I think. Which you're I've seen right, in theater, yeah. it's like you're writing music because this is what you're, you're made to do, and you do it well, and some people will love it, some people will hate it. Um, but you know, some people just don't cater to whatever is out there. It's, it's it's more like a not a selfish thing, but it's just like it's an honest thing. An honest thing. It's this being is who I am. This is what I'm are. doing, and it's not about oh, I'm going to sit down with a group of people. I'm going to get this person, this person, this because they've written all these number one songs, and it's going to be a hit. And so when you have that yeah. in the basis of it, that's fine. And there's people out there, and it works just great for them. But um, there's the other side, which is you do it because you love what you do. It doesn't matter what the feedback is really mm -hmm. you know i mean it, it matters <laughs> i mean you want people to like it but that's not what the driving force for some musicians whether you're a celebrity or not or or, or a nine to five 
office job person always wants to leave something behind for their loved ones, whether it's their family or their friends or their community. I think it's a normal human thing to have that kind of thought. It's like, what, am, what is my contribution to mankind? What, am, I, am I taking while I'm on this earth or am I giving? And what am I giving? I mean, I know how to give from my gifts and everybody has a gift. So, I mean, yeah, sure. It enters the mind of like, what am I going to leave behind? What did I do that was good? So, yeah, you know, what's our contribution? I mean, at least for me, I definitely think about stuff like that. So, okay, you can only pick one CD that goes inside the casket with you. That's, that's horribly that's unfair. <laughs> There's so much music out there. I mean, so many styles of music. That's like, no. I'm going to say no to that. <laughs> I'm going to argue on that because you can't just Can it be a compilation? One. How, about, how about, okay, one CD with... S like about 80 different mp3s of, of songs from different people so how about that there's a there's a loophole in that so one political. 